Um, we are going to have a publisher of comic books. Now, if you've heard the term shanime, you will probably think for those people who are exposed to the Persian Iranian culture, that would be Shad means king or great. Shaname means the book of kings. This book goes back all the way to 5,000 years ago when we have a, an artist, a poet, a writer named Ferdowsi who was commissioned by then Sultan to produce, to write books about his uh, regime. And he was promised, Mr. Ferdowsi, I'll call him Mr. Ferdowsi, he was promised three horses to carry three loads of golden coins. It took him 30 years to produce this book, Shaname, three books of poetry, an epic of poetry that talks about the Persian culture, the Persian empire, and the Persian history. And they're all in poetry. So then, of course, as we know, the uh, Persian government, the Iranian government, has evolved into something that some of us probably won't be too appreciative, but in any event, we have a gentleman here tonight who took the same idea, the same concept, the Book of Kings, but instead of poetry, he has comics, cartoons, which I believe would be more in line with what we, we, meaning me, and a lot of the people are accustomed to. And of course, we have my dear friend Richie Bondock to join us because they served together in the, the Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we have Cameron Jurigi to talk about the Book of Kings comic books. Welcome. Welcome, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So tell about this tell us about these books uh, that you have and what got you going with it and uh, obviously it's entertainment but it's also educational sure well um, basically what happened was is that uh, myself uh, my brother and uh, an old friend of ours um, we in our uh, uh, day jobs uh, we were working on a comic book actually uh, targeting the Asian American communities in the United States mm -hmm. in an anti-smoking campaign Okay. And uh, so we designed a series of comic books which had circulations of an excess of a million uh, copies. And the messaging to uh, Asian American teens was an anti-smoking message. Okay. And as we built these comics and uh, had uh, enjoyed some success with that, um, we started thinking, hey, this is a lot of fun doing this. What right. if we did something like this uh, that would highlight uh, our own culture? The three mm -hmm. of us, we uh, all three of us are half Iranian, half American, uh, and even uh, though my brother was born in the States, I was born in Iran, uh -huh. and uh, we had grown up in Iran reading American comic books, and uh, were very interested in Thor and Spider-Man and Superman. Oh, I love those too. <laughs> and Tintin, exactly. But we also, uh, growing up, since we were living in Western Asia, we were also exposed to manga comics uh, that came from Japan. We were exposed to European comics. So we had a very much more global view of comic King books. King of Persia, the movie, that's based on a comic book, right? Uh, yes, The Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia is actually right. um, based on a video game. Oh, okay. Um, but yes, and it's, uh, it's, it's been quite a success. And uh -huh. uh, the nice thing about uh, this uh, Prince of Persia film is, is that we are just about to go into an agreement with one of the companies involved in promoting that film. Excellent. Uh, so we're very excited about that, and hopefully we'll make an announcement about that soon as well. Good. So we're, that's, that's, that's a lot of excitement. So you have some work you want to show us, right? Sure. Um, so... Uh, if I might ask your engineer to click on the first... And of course, Richie here is a big fan of comic books. Oh, yes. Uh, in fact, um, 
Uh, Cameron uh, here has been uh, at the last uh, two her solo uh, WonderCons. Uh, WonderCon uh, and SuperCon and yes. WonderCon and SuperCon. Those are, those are comic books? Uh, comic no, book the, conventions. Yes. Oh, conventions, oh my god. Y yes, uh, they hold them at uh, the Moscone Center here in San Francisco. Okay, here. Yeah. Rostam. So, tell, tell us about this it. is just showing a little bit of a video of uh, some of the scenes out of our comic book just wow. to get a little feel of it. This is the story of Rostam and Sobrov. Wow. And uh, it's the first comic book that we released. And it's about the story of the father and the son. Uh, the, the father doesn't know it's his son, and they actually end up meeting in battle. And that's sort of the battle scene. And in the end, uh, it's sort of a tragedy. Very much uh, reminiscent of uh, modern movies uh, like the Star Wars trilogy, where a father and son are uh, having to meet each other in battle to the death. And um, except these shanamis, as you were so eloquently uh, uh, describing in right. the, uh, the introduction, is is this book was written about a thousand years ago by a poet called Ferdosi. Right. And uh, Ferdosi was commissioned uh, by the uh, king at the time to write this. Uh -huh. And um, what he was doing was uh, he was taking all of the history and mythology of Persia which had been an oral and written tradition for right. thousands of years at that time and he decided to actually write it in in a long poem and this um, it's really a uh, an incredible uh, piece of world literature in terms of the fact well, that you, you have some more right sure oh let's take a look at uh, you have uh, you brought what two, two clips I have first? A, a, a three video clips one of each of the books oh great okay um, and this is the second book this is the story of the king Keiko oh, wow. and how he meets his bride and uh, his bride is the daughter of another uh, king and her name is Sudabe, and uh, they end up in a big battle at the end. Unfortunately, the king becomes imprisoned, and Rostam, who is our great hero, has to come and save the king. Basically, he is the big warrior hero who keeps coming to the rescue. Uh, uh, Beautiful art. Thank you very much. Who is the artist? The artist is a gentleman by the name of Carl Allstadter. He's, uh, okay. he's been working with us for properties. It's beautiful. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. So, uh, back to the history, this uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Ferdosi, this uh, work is about a hundred thousand verses. Wow. This poem is written in terms it has a thousand chapters only in the book wow and this uh, just to give you the an idea of the size of the scale is seven times larger than the iliad wow so it really is a big it's like an encyclopedia it took 30 oh. years to write it's an incredible piece of work and it's so rich and full of stories and so we decided to, to go to that source material and uh, try and bring this to a Western audience which is completely unexposed to this very rich history of mythology and tradition. I think that's brilliant. The Ferdowsi was uh, betrayed by the uh, Sultan, though, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He, he was initially, as you had said, right. promised a very large amount of gold for this work. Exactly. And um, essentially what happens is, is when he finally delivered his work, right. Uh, the king at the time, which I believe uh, was the son of the king who originally had uh, right. commissioned him, um, kind of decided not to pay him uh, because what was because Ferdosi wrote uh, that his books were about all of the all of uh, Persia and all of the kings and and the people instead of just him. Right, well, the Sultan just wanted wanted Ferdowsi to to talk about him. Yeah, he he delivered a lot more than the Sultan expected. Right, right, and, right. Uh, so yes, and so so he gave him uh, three camels and silver instead. Yeah, he was paid in silver instead of gold, which uh, Ferdowsi was very bitter about. And he and, died poor. <laughs> and um, not only that, uh, what he did do is uh, he actually wrote 
some verses into the book. So he had another version right. at a later, he added verses into the book which were not very complimentary to the king that uh, stiffed him. Um, so, uh, but that's sort of the history of the author, but it is, uh, it is amusing. Um, but, but, they, but, but they built, under Reza Pahlavi, they built a really nice mausoleum for him, didn't they? Yes, they have. It's in uh, Tus, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. in Iran, which is a, a city not far away from Mashhad, which is sort of uh, north uh, eastern uh, right. region of Iran and uh, there is a mausoleum dedicated right, to him. Right, right. In, in uh, Persian culture and I and I refer to Persian culture rather than Iran specifically because right. Greater Persia extends beyond the borders of current uh, exactly, Iran. Yeah. I mean the Persian culture is very influential in Afghanistan. And Iran had uh, uh, Iraq as part of its territory long, at, long at, time at ago. At various times, absolutely. Large parts of uh, Iraq were part of Greater Persia as w were the Caucasus regions. Wow. Um, so oh, Azerbaijan. sorry. Can we look at the third? Uh, I, I don't want to, I want people to see all sure. the clips that he brought. So areas such as Azerbaijan, Georgia, really? um, uh, most of the, uh, you know, Samarkand, Bukhara, if you get into the Central Asian uh, wow. countries. Okay, it's stores of penance and exile. This, this is a, a video montage of some of the imagery that we use in our third book. And this book is where it gets more into the fantasy wow. uh, portion where they are battling demons and battling dragons because it is a combination of historical fact as well as mythology. And mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the book spans a very large period of time. It's, it spans ancient Persia right up until the time of when Alexander the Great invades Persia. Right. And then there's a section uh, from when Alexander the Great uh, had invaded Persia all the way right up um, until actually the book ends. Arab conquest of Persia, right. because in Ferdowsi's mind, when uh, Persia was conquered and the Arabs uh, conquered, uh, right. that was sort of his greatest tragedy for him, and that's where the book actually ends. Awesome. Now let's talk that. about one king, and 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 this is the uh, the one of the stuff that I've read is the, uh, about King Xerxes. King Xerxes married a Jewish yes. commoner, Esther. Esther. Yes. And that's a real story, right? Yes, it is. That actually is a historical fact story. It's not mythology. And um, actually, the um, from the, uh, there is a there is a cylinder uh -huh. that is in the United Nations, and uh, that cylinder, or a co excuse me, a copy of that cylinder is right. in the United Nations, which is acknowledged as the very first universal declaration of human rights wow and so when cyrus the great invaded babylon right and he basically he freed the jews and he huh. allowed them to rebuild their temples right and uh so and it's also uh, recorded in the bible as well and um so he was the very first person in st prior to that historically conquerors would come in and basically wipe people out and take right. over and become the new kings and what he did was when he conquered he took everyone he conquered and put them back in charge and said the only difference is is that I am the king of kings you will still remain as a king but you are a king subject to me as your emperor and that was the big difference and he also gave rights to all people, right. and he gave them all religious freedom rights to practice right. their own religions, even though the Persians themselves had their own religion. Right, the right. Persian religion was Zoroastrianism, mm -hmm. but um, even though they practiced their own religion, they were very tolerant and allowed mm -hmm. all other people to practice their own religions. So yes. it was free to, for him to marry whoever he wanted, even if it wasn't from his religious background. Wow, that's awesome. Now, of course, you, you, this is uh, what you're doing now is not political. I mean, sure. be, be, when you came in, I asked, well, let me see, there was a Shah of Iran, and that's when things fell apart, and then we had the crazy Ayatollah, and now Iran is, we don't know where it is. Sure. So this is non-political, and you, you're just appreciating the culture and bringing the culture of, you know, what was lost in the current administration I guess Ex exactly I mean we, we are very interested in uh, preserving uh, the richness of the culture right uh, we believe that the Shahnameh is 
uh, basically a cultural gem of the world. Not oh, necessarily exactly. just of it. Persia, yes. but for the world. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of uh, uh, morals to be taken from the stories. Um, the heroes within the stories are very right. different from Western heroes. Uh, for example, uh, Western heroes, you know, do no wrong, whereas um, our heroes, they are flawed characters. They make mistakes, but at the end of the day, it's what's in their heart that's most important. Oh, I see. That's great. Okay, so now let's. Uh, we only have a minute to go, yes. so we're going to have to do a wrap. Um, thank you so much for. Oh, we have 30 seconds actually. So thank you so much for coming and and for participating in our show. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the show. And uh, if you have anything, uh, please contact Richie Bondock. And uh, he's been recruiting good guests for us. And again, this is Myrna Lim. Thank you so much and good night.